Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Thai League Central podcast. I'm Gian, and I will be your host for today's episode. And as always, I'm joined by another member of the Thai League Central crew. So, Ob, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, the sun's out, and my plants are doing well. So, I'm happy yeah. today. Yeah, them. today we don't have enough time to ask you about your cat or your plants or anything like that because we have a very special guest who is waiting to speak. He's a man who's done a lot of incredible work at youth level for Thailand, helping to improve our football for the next generation. Please welcome Thailand's under-19 national team head coach, Salva Valero. Hello, how is everything? Greetings uh, from here. It's a pleasure to be with you. I've been following your podcast and, and your news for a long time already, both of you. And, and I'm very pleased to be with you and to share some opinions, some knowledge about, especially about Thai football and football in general with you guys. Yeah, so we really appreciate you taking the time. We have a lot of questions about you. Uh, a bit of background. You work for a company called Econo, which we'll ask you more about in yeah. a second. And you were the Thailand under 16, 17 head coach, and you've been been moving up with the same generation to now coach the Thai under-19 team. Yeah. Uh, so we'll start by asking you about yourself in general. So how did you start your coaching career and what influenced you to join and come to Thailand? Well, I, as, as you probably know, I come from Barcelona, Spain. I grew up there and I, I was there until my 23 years old. So I grew up very close to Barcelona and Barca, FC Barcelona environment. I used to go to Camp Nou, the stadium of Barcelona, with my dad since I was uh, three years old. So I, I was a, a football fan at that time. Uh, I was crazy for, for, Thai, for Barca team, for all the players. I knew all the players since I was very young. And then uh, when I was, uh, I think, 13 or 14, uh, it was uh, the game uh, Barca Inter uh, from uh, Champions League semi final, second leg in, in the Camp Nou. And I went to the stadium. I was, my, my seat was very close to Mourinho that night. I was, I was behind Mourinho. And, and it gave me an inspiration about leadership, about how to convince your players to follow a game plan. That was my inspiration. That's how everything started. Because, um, okay, of course, I was a big fan of Guardiola because it was my team, my coach. But that day, Mourinho inspired me um, more than football things. I mean, uh, I, I saw how he, he made Eto, he became a fullback that day because they were with one player less. And I was behind the bench and I was saying, I want to be like this guy. This leadership, this man management, uh, I want to be like him. And since then, I was following both of them. Mourinho and Guardiola. Guardiola more for the tactical things and Mourinho for the team management, for, for the leadership, for how, how, to, how to deal with the players. And that's how everything started uh, as a coach, that inspiration. Then I started to coach very, very young uh, kids. Of course, when you start, I was 15 and I got uh, under seven. 16, I got uh, under eight. And I was growing up and then I was... Every, every year I was growing up with, uh, the, with the generation I was coaching. And then when I was 20 years old, I got the, the first job on the top level academies in Catalonia for under 16 uh, level. Uh, you play in the league against Barca under 16, against Espanyol, the region of Catalonia where the level is very high. Uh, I was there three years in the top level of under 16s. And then I, when I was 23, I... I got the offer from FA Thailand and, and since then you, you know everything about me, but <laughs> that was the story. Yeah, and also for people who don't know, um, could you tell us a bit about Econo, the company that you work for, who works with the FA? Like, what are they? What's their vision? What do they do, etc.? Yeah, well, of course, yeah. I, since that moment, I, I joined the Econo uh, company. I, when, I, when I came here, before I collaborated with them, I, I went to some courses that they were providing uh, for coaches in Catalonia to, to get some education in, in coaching uh, and to learn about the methodology because I was interested since I was starting my career. 
Uh, I joined them officially to come to this project, to, to, to FA Thailand. Econa is a company uh, that is working all over the world. Uh, we have uh, a lot of projects. Uh, it, it's very strong in Japan, for example, but also we are uh, at Gothenburg. We used to be at Sundsvall. Both clubs are in Sweden. Uh, in Finland, we are working with Sami Hippia Academy. Uh, we used to be at Paris Saint Germain, as you know, uh, because Carlos and, and David, the two owners of and the creators of Econo, uh, were there in the in the academy, uh, leading the academy for three years. Um, so it's a company that has international projects and helps clubs, um, football associations, and individual players to improve uh, and provides them the services that they require. They, we have different programs uh, because it, it's a different situation when you are work with a club, with a federation, or with a player. But we provide them services that develop them, that help them uh, to improve uh, regarding methodology, regarding uh, sometimes they send coaches like me here, but sometimes they send methodology directors to academies in Japan, in Albirex Nigata, for example, or in Nara. We, we, have, uh, we work with two clubs and, and academies as well in, in Japan. So it's like a, a tailor-made suit, you know, it depends on the requirements that, uh, that the club or the federation has. We adjust the project for them and we provide them what they need. Um, the first topic we're going to go to is the progress that has already been made at youth level in the time that you've been here in Thailand. So mm -hmm. since you've been here, what changes have been made at youth coaching level, both by you and Econo and by other academies? And yeah. how has it improved the standard of players? Okay, yeah. Well, when I arrived here uh, in 2017, at uh, that time, uh, no uh, Thai players were playing abroad. Okay, we, if you remember in 2017, we had Muantong United that had a massive, I was impressed. The first game I, I went to see was Montong and I said, wow, that's a team. You know, I, I remember mm -hmm. they, I went to an ACL game, April or May, early May uh, 2017. The atmosphere was amazing. The team was performing against Japanese teams. Wow, Chisco on top, the Spanish player, Aoyama. They, they had massive players uh, that time and they were playing with Toch Sawan, very good football. But if you analyze then, uh, where were the Thai players? The Thai players were playing in Thailand. After that, China Tip, Kawin, uh, Titi Pan, Tirasil, they went to the J League and they performed very well. So that's um, a massive step that we made as a country to, to send players, and not only to send the players, to perform and to be key players for the clubs. If you analyze uh, Tiraton in, in J-League, he's one of the, he was the best uh, left back a couple of years ago. So it means that the Thai players, we have potential. Uh, and when we send the players abroad, they perform. That's, that's a reality. And that was not happening uh, when I arrived. Uh, regarding my job and regarding um, what I've done and, and how this, how can I help to, to Thai football to develop uh, in, in terms of individual players, let's say, more than, more than the, the country itself, more thinking about the individual perspective. Because when we, when we talk about development, we can talk about uh, clubs, we can talk about teams, we can talk about national team. But I, I also want to put the focus on the individual players because it is, it's, a different, it's a different development, it's a, it's a different um, rhythm when you develop individual players or clubs. For the clubs, you, you need long term, you, you need. Uh, a structure but for the players if you have uh, strong projects you you can develop players very very fast i think individual players um we when we arrived we analyzed how was the reality here in, in thailand and we developed a group which is called elite group i don't know if you heard but was a was a group of players that we selected from from the national teams and from the clubs for example kuritsava kaman for example chanarong for example chamonkorn supanat supachok Shai. We picked the best player, the best uh, promising young players under 21 uh, to under 16. And we created with them an individual program for each of them, where we analyzed them uh, individually uh, with the club and with the national team. And we 
selected which topics we wanted to to work with them and we were having we are having because we, this project is in process we are having meetings with them regularly uh, we provide them uh, individual fundamentals for them and i think that helped uh, these individual players first of all to get uh, confidence because okay the national team coaches selected me for being a nelly player even though i'm 16 17 and second to provide them some tools because in the club i understand that the, the coach has to think about the team but from the national team perspective when we think about the individual players we can help them individually we can put the efforts and and the time on them individually how to improve them individually and that's how we achieved a very good level I think individually and, and, and a very good generation that now is under 20, under 21, under 19, Kanit Panya, Chanaron, Chanmonkon, Supanat. I think this generation uh, developed very well about individual uh, fundamentals. And I think by helping them individually, we can, I think we, we, we can get very good, talented players uh, in the very nearly, nearly future. Yeah. Also, I want to talk about um, how to how I influence the the Thai people. And when you saw my team playing, uh, we played a couple of uh, good competitions. Because the, the first year I took the the under sixteen, and I didn't or honestly I didn't have enough time to to work uh, my my way uh, in in one month. I, I made some adjustment some adjustments. I was focus uh, on uh, organizing the team very well defensively to be ready to compete in a very short period of time. I arrived in, in April. Uh, we selected players in May and in June we had the AFF. We, we arrived until the final. We lost in the penalties against Vietnam and we went to the AFC qualifiers in, in September. This was 2018 we qualified. Mm. After that, I moved to under 14 and then I had time. Uh, with the generation 2004, I had time to to work my principles and to set my way. That the pro this project with the team under 14, we went to J to Wuhan. We we beat Japan twice, uh, but playing very good football. We went to Spain. We made the trip to Spain. The same players, okay. The the core of the players were the same. We went to the AFF. Uh, unfortunately, we lost in the final against again against Malaysia in the last 10 minutes. But if you analyze how we played, a lot of Thai coaches, they told me, oh, I like how you play. I, this is an influence for, for, for us. Because the way we played was very different from other teams, from other clubs that, we, that played here. When you analyze how we play. Yeah? So I think that, that's something that uh, we gave uh, to, the, to the Thai football and that created influence in the players and in some academies, uh, when, I'm, when I've been in touch with some coaches, they have been asking me about how to train this, which concepts are important. And with this, I think this legacy will be interesting to see what happens in the, in the future, mm -hmm. how, how to play this playing style. So when you work with a Thai player, what makes them different from a player in Europe? You know, what what is the reason generally why Thai players haven't achieved the same level as players in Europe? And how, and how do you, how did that change how you work with them? Yeah, I, I always say that when, when they are below 16, 17 years old, the Thai players, they have the same level as the top players in Europe. Of course, let's say I played against Ansu Fati, uh, against Eric Garcia when they were 16. Okay, that's, that's another level, I, I gotta say. Okay, the top, top players in Europe, the superstars that when you say see them in under 16, they are already outstanding. That level, so far, we didn't achieve it. But the, the second level of players, the, the players that at the end, they make it to the La Liga. Okay, Not only Ansu Fati and Eric Garcia, they make it to the La Liga. As well, other players that are not that top, they arrive to La Liga. So to that, to that level of players that play in Atletico de Madrid Academy, in Girona Academy, Leganes Academy, Espanol Academy, our players are similar level. When we went to Spain, we played four games. We lost against, uh, with my team under 15, this was in 2018, 2019, sorry, three years ago. Uh, we played against, against Atletico Madrid, Girona, Leganes, and um, uh, Girona, Bar and Barcelona. 
Barcelona was another level. But the rest, we competed the, the three games. We won one, we lost two, but 2-1, uh, 3-2, 1 zero, something like this. So I realized that below 17, 16, 17, the level is similar. Our, our best players are uh, European level. The, the thing is what happens between 17 and 21. Because in, at 21, you have to be first 11 in your, in your, in your club if you, want to, if you want to make it uh, to the top level in Asia or in Europe. No? So what happens? And what we identified uh, is that the, the level of the competition that we have here below 21, or either, either the players are able to play pro, uh, professionally, then it's okay. And Supanat, for example, 16, he played in Buriram first team that's that's the, the, the ideal scenario the problem is if they are not good enough or the club don't give them the chance to play in the first team what happens with them that three or four years that's why mm. i think it's very important project like fox hunt i don't know if you heard is a project from Kim power they've been sending players to europe when they were we selected them at Kim power cup 15 years old they when they're 16 to 18. I think that stage, if we achieve to have projects like this, not only in power, other projects, other possibilities for our young players to get an, get an option to travel to Europe, to play there, to have competition there, to get an experience, I think that would be a, a good substitute for if we cannot provide them uh, professional football yet. Because everyone now is impressed with Pedri, the player from uh, Spain, right? Playmaker, Iniesta, the new Iniesta, whatever, Every, everyone saying. But what happened with this player? When he was 16, he was playing in second division every minute. 17, he went to Barcelona. 18, first 11 in Barcelona. This player maybe in our system was not playing was in youth level, for him, not good enough. Uh, in Spain, youth level, even for him, not good enough. So we have to either provide them professional football to the players that are ready. For example, my centre-back, uh, Chonapat Wapan, 1 meter 95, 17 years old. He went to Rapacha, he will play, he will play for sure in, in T2. That's ideal. He will be playing with a... Uh, 30 years old striker again against them every training every day competing ideal i was very happy when when i received the news from rapper chad that they want him with another place is happening the same t3 okay but the, if, if it's t3 is it's t3 if it's t2 like rapper chad is perfect but if it's t3 t3 minutes playing opportunity to play in professional football and as well having the option to send them to japan to send them to fox Hunt like uh Kim Power is doing, or now they have a, another option. Kim Power is are sending uh, young players to Luven uh, because they have the Oits Luven. I think these two ways are the two ways that we need to promote if we want to help this crucial stage between 16 and 20, 21, to help our top talented players. This, this is very important. And I think uh, everyone in Thailand must uh, be aware of that. I want, to, I want to add another thing, because maybe th this could be misunderstanding uh, if, if I don't uh, clarify. We have elite players and we have the, the rest. I was talking only about elite players. We don't need to send every type player under 18 to the top level or to Spain, Europe, Japan. I mean the elite players, the 20 top players, the 30 top players. That's our, our concern as a national team. Mm -hmm. But the bunch of players, the, the majority of the players, is okay for them to play uh, in the youth system. If we create a strong youth league, like we are preparing, it's okay for them. I was only talking about elite players, about the players that have potential to play in the first team in the future. That's That's the project that I was talking about, not about the whole system and, and the whole players. All right, I think, I think that's, a, that's a great answer. And 
I totally agree with, with uh, the idea of a of a, a bridge between the 15 and 16 to the 20 and 21. Yeah. And I think a youth league is what we really missing a consistent youth league in Thailand. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was gonna ask you about what changes you have to make for 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 Thai football, but you kind of already answered that 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 okay. Econo is a tailor suit. But you also touch on an uh, uh, interesting topic is that it's the under-16 team. I remember watching that, that team and you were right when you said that that, that team kind of actually was organized and played a different football than, than what yeah. other Thai coach was making at the moment. I, I, I remember really being really happy about how the side transition and how 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 compact they were and yeah. how how high they were organizing that defensive thing but again when you lost that final on penalties if i remember correctly the 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 Thai media was like what is going on and, and everybody panicked do you so my question is do you think that that defeat kind of makes it harder for you to to work from the get go or <laughs> Or, or is it just just another obstacle to overcome? So when we when we come back to the training camp together, it's not that we start from zero. We already have the 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 the, the, prin- the principles. So the first two days, we remind the topics, the, the core topics. Okay, the pressing after the contra pressing, how to build up, two or three key things, and then we okay. If we are playing against a, a very good team, we prepare more defensively. If we are expecting in the friendly game to have a ball possession, we prepare some offensive topics. But to create that identity, it takes time. And we took time. I think, uh, and now imagining what will happen in the long term, that game against uh, Malaysia will give us knowledge and expertise that we will use with this team maybe in two or three years when we will play another final because we lost that game, we will learn from that. And what happened was that in the last 10 minutes, the wind was against us. Uh, the momentum came against us. Our centre-back, the one I told, uh, signed for Rapacha, got an injury and, and asked for, the, for a substitution 20 minutes before the, the final of the game. So we learn from that. And I think getting that experiences will provide us uh, a very strong identity because we suffer together already. We lost together and we will be much stronger. It's like Klopp. When, when Georgian Klopp arrived to Liverpool, uh, they didn't win at the start, but they created identity. That, after two or three years, show that the work that they did before uh, was worth it. That, that's what I think will give us. Expertise will give us some experience and, and we will be very strong. When I call out, every week I call the, the, the key players of the team and I, I talk with them because we have good communication, we do FaceTime. And, and they talk with me like they are my family. That, to create that is, I think is, is, is priceless, right? Because it creates a relationship between the players and between uh, the staff coaches and the, and the players that uh, I think we will be very strong if we, if we keep uh, working together. It reminds me a little bit uh, when I went to Qatar. I, I was in Qatar for I did my license in Qatar, the, the the AE license, the coaching certificate, right? So I was there two months, and I I, I observed Felix Sanchez, the coach of Qatar. He has been with the players since they were 16. Now they are 23, 24. Uh, Al Moez Ali, Akram Afif. Uh, Pedro, the, the, the core players are 23, 24. Seven years ago, they were with him in under 16. And they won the, they went to the World Cup under 20 uh, with this generation. I think we are creating the same. I think we are creating the same in Thailand. And now we mix the generation 2003 and 2004 that I used to work with them uh, back in the days, in 2017. I also know the players 2002, Chamon Khon, Supanat, okay, all this group. So I think when we when we will put all of them together, this new, new generation will have identity 
and we we can do uh, what Qatar did with uh, with Felix. I think we can do it. We'll take time, but I think we are we are on that way. And you talk about the relationship with you have with the players and how important that is to build a good foundation. Yeah. And my question, my question is, are you alone enough in your opinion? Do we need more Salva from Ecuador <laughs> working in in in, in Thai football for to build a, a better foundation for for the whole youth setup? What's what's your opinion well, about that? Well, as you saw in the news, we we are bringing people. We we are being. Uh, meeting in, for the last month, uh, once a week, we are we are having meetings. We are explaining the game model, how we work, uh, scouting process, uh, all the recruitment. We are explaining uh, to the coaches that will take the under 16 to follow the same way. Of course, they have their identity. People is not Salva; it's a it's a different person with another experience, different profile. But I think we can work together. And what what I think is that. We, we have to help uh, him as well uh, with our experience in the national team for four years to, to understand what is the important thing to do with, with a team uh, and how to create um, the, the strength of the team by, with a relationship with the players, with the staff, creating a good identity. I think from, from what, I, what I saw in, in my experience here, I can help to create more, more groups of teams, more more um, strong strong identity groups. Let's say a generation between 1916, generation between 1416. I think we can do it uh, with different coaches, with different profile. But I think we can we can create similar uh, process to what we did. Yeah, and Pipop, I think he has leadership. He he's a legend, and the way he was playing, it matches with with what we want. Hard worker. Uh, pressing style, dynamic. So I think we, we we will work together very well. That's my feeling. I have good feelings. I know Ob's, Ob's too polite to ask you the follow-up question to press you more for the answer, but I will do it. Like, <laughs> Do you think that with more Econo coaches and if the Thai FA had committed more to your organization, the results would be better? Well, I think, as you know, uh, we, we came four of us for coaches we we controlled the whole system 21 to 14 for very few months um, because of reasons that, that are not the, the topic now but i think the big change was when carlos came the the td okay he's doing an amazing work uh, that sometimes uh, you cannot see because it's a long term. It's not a, he's not like preparing a preparing a team and uh, like uh, he he's not uh, preparing a team and and producing results in the short term. He's focusing on the long term, right? So all the projects that he's developing regarding uh, coaching education, regarding uh, grassroots, regarding women's football, that's very important for our country. And he's putting all the efforts there in projects that are long, long-term projects. And you will see the impact and you will remember this conversation in a couple of years, in three or four years, when all these projects will, will show uh, the way that he wants to, with the, with the FA, with, with the management from, from the FA, he wants to implement. You will see that. So I think before we were only focused on the, on the teams, now, with Carlos, we are global, and um, our our work uh, with the, with with the FA is like um, more um, how to say transversal, right? Where we are, we are helping uh, the FA to implement all the processes that uh, with with the support of the of the AFC, uh, we are we are able to to help and to provide the experiences that Carles has from Paris Saint-Germain, from Barcelona, massive experience. So I think you will see that maybe you don't see us in, in, in all the youth setup, but we are, Econo and Carles is helping uh, Thai football for the long term, you will see, you will see in the long term. And like, if you were to give like one quick answer on 
on what maybe one changes or one reform you want to see that would improve Thai football. What what would that be? Well, I think um, he Carlos is putting uh, big efforts with the FA to organize a, a good youth league, and I think um, maybe not this year because of the of the pandemic. Of course, it's not easy to organize this kind of tournament, and now the situation in Thailand regarding the COVID is not not the best for sure. Uh, but I think uh, we we need to have a very strong youth league. We are putting the efforts. To organize it properly and to create a, a good competition, I, th I think that that's what we need, and and that will come sooner or later. We will have a, a strong youth league, and and that we need it for sure. Yeah. Right. So next, we'll move on to discussing uh, more generally about the institutions that develop young players in Thailand. So, uh, for example, in Thailand, youth development is done by a lot of different clubs, different academies, different schools. And players yeah. go through very different paths to reach the, the level, you know, professional level or the level that they're at when they're 16, 17. On the other hand, uh, Vietnam, our regional rivals, have improved a lot in recent years by having a centralized academy under the VFF. Uh, do you think that Thailand would benefit from having a similarly centralized academy? I think um, the reality in Vietnam, uh, especially the clubs in Vietnam and the clubs in Thailand, is very different. So I don't think uh, the solution that Vietnam implemented uh, with the VFF um, training camp and, uh, and, and academy is not matching what the reality in Thailand. So I, I don't think that's a, that's a solution, to be fair. I think uh, here we have strong clubs. We have strong academies. When you visit Burirama Academy or Chomburi Academy, they are... European standards, uh, so and, and more, of course, more, more academies, uh, they have the European standards. So I think here the role of the clubs is very important and we, don't, we cannot forget about, about that. So I think the, the reality here could be, why not uh, in the future to have this, uh, these regional academies? I, I don't think it's a bad idea at all. It's a, it's a project similar to what uh, France did with the... Uh, with Clairefontaine, okay, they had this um, regional academies. I think it's a good idea, but the role of the clubs will be always very important here in Thailand because of culture, uh, because of history of the clubs, and because of the clubs. And here they, they want to promote their the young players and and they want to invest in the academy because they, they have this this culture. So. I don't think that solution is the solution that will uh, having a regional academy once one regional academy will will solve the problems. But we have to put the efforts as we are doing with uh, with one of the projects, the club licensing academy licensing uh, supported by AFC. We we want to help the academies to raise up the standards, and I think that that should be the way to help the clubs, to help the academies to to improve, to have uh even better processes to provide them with some with some um, project with some uh, tools to improve the what they what they're doing and to help them to raise up together i think that that should be the way more than having a, a regional center with where we centralize uh, mm. all the knowledge and all the players i think in thailand the reality is different so i think we, we have to do a 50 50 way uh, by helping the academies yeah, I think many of us agree with that. We've been discussing this topic a bit. And I think we all agree with that. And um, a follow-up question, which clubs and which academies do you think have done the best work in terms of youth development and promotion in recent years? Yeah. Well, of course, uh, the, the, the academies that provided uh, more players to, to first teams, we can say that are Muantong, Buriram, uh, Chomburi, Chen Rai, okay, the, the, the big clubs from from the, of course, from, from the Thai League, but as well clubs like uh, Klonkon Academy that just signed a, an agreement with uh, Polistero. They, they being, it's Samut, uh, Samut Sakon uh, Academy that changed the name to Klonkon. Uh, now they just signed with uh, Port, uh, with, uh, sorry, with Polistero. They have very good uh, way and very good structure in the academy. 
they work very well. I think there are many, many academies that uh, provide uh, to the players uh, good training uh, to, and, and good coaching uh, style and, and good, good quality training. So I think uh, that the level is, is, is good. We, of course, can be better, but we are trying to help them. But I was, I was impressed with, with some academies like, uh, like Long Kong. I think uh, it's, it's important to, to keep developing the, the coaching uh, in the academies because that provides us, uh, be- will provide us better players. I wanted to add a comment about the centralized training um, center because I think we used to have that. It's called the, it's the excellent squad, you know, the Thai excellent squad. And I don't think that kind of work. So the kids stayed in long job, the old, training facility and I think that was that was kind of of a bit of a, a disaster and that's just my comment <laughs> from someone who saw it firsthand but anyway yeah. yeah I I agree that here the clubs have strong identity they want to take care of their players and I think that it's okay for us to for, to, to to keep the players with the clubs and to help them to improve the standards, I think this should be the way. More than getting all the players in a in a centralized venue, I think in the reality of Thailand it works better to to keep them in the club. I'll ask one more question, and I'll hand it over to Ob for some. Um, so this generation of players is eligible for the U20 World Cup in 2023, which takes place in Indonesia. So is qualifying for that competition a, a big priority, and what would it mean for Thai football if you achieve that? Well, of course, would be an achievement, uh, of course. But in football, I think it's not ideal to target some results and to think that, oh, we achieve the results, we are successful. We don't achieve the result, we are not successful. Because of the things I was telling you before, sometimes you don't win in the short term, but you, want, you, you create the roots for the long term. Of course, we will work for that topic, for that uh, goal. Of course, that, that will be the target in the short period. But I don't think we have to be obsessed with the result in that uh, competition. We have to dream. I, I, I got this idea from Mourinho when they, when they, gain, when they gain, um, won the Champions League in 2011 with Inter. During the whole competition, he was saying, for Barcelona, is an obsession. For us, it's a dream. And we have to think about dream, not about obsession. When it comes to, obs- to an obsession, it uh, gives you fears. It gives you more pressure. When it's a dream, it's more pure. Okay? It's passion. And that's what we, what we need, to dream with that, not to have the obsession with that. Work hard, but in a, in a good way, in a positive way, not with the obsession of achieving it. Because it, if not, in football... Everything can happen and doesn't mean that, oh, we lost one game against Japan. Now we are not good enough. No, it's not like that. Uh, if we lose against Japan or like happened, we lost against South Korea. It doesn't mean that we are not good enough. It means that we lost that game, but we are doing uh, good things as well. So I think more than thinking about a specific target, we have to think about the long run and, and to dream with that, of course, but think about the long term. Your, your assistant at the other 90s is Mr. Lati. He's the former assistant head, head coach of the Bangkok United under 17 side. I was wondering who, how, this, how did this arrangement came to be and what's the working relationship? What, what's important do you look for in an in, in assistant, especially in the youth level? Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to say that uh, I was working, uh, this is like my, my fourth assistant already in, in four years. I think that is important to have someone with you like we, like we had with Pakasit Sensuk, uh, someone that uh, in the future will be able to be a, a head coach himself. So I think we, this, is, uh, this is important to, to give them, to give your assistants uh, some knowledge that they will use uh, for the future of Thai football. I, I don't think that they just have to please me and, and to follow my way. I think my responsibility as a head coach is also to give them some knowledge and to 
help them to develop skills as a head coach in the future. That's my target uh, with, with all my assistants. With Rati, I know him since I arrived because we, we were close with uh, Bangkok United. We played a couple of friendly games my first year here. He was the assistant and I identified that he had potential to be, so he, he was in our list. And when uh, Pakasit uh, decided to, to move uh, to, another, to another job, uh, I, I had this interview with, with Rati. I think uh, his strength is that he, he's a very open-minded and hard worker uh, coach, he wants to learn. He's very smart, so he can get our ideas very fast. Now that we have been working one year and a half together, and we are working with him uh, weekly, we have meetings with him. Uh, for example, in the last month, we we made an analysis of uh, Euro Cup. Every week, he was presenting to me uh, an analyze an analysis of uh, analysis of a team. And the principles that he was analyzing are principles that we have in our game model. So now he sees the football as in, with my eyes. Okay, so we talk about the same topics, uh, about the same concepts. When we see uh, one tactical movement, we understand the same and we have the same vocabulary. This is important to create it, like uh, it, it demands some time, but analyzing games together and providing uh, with having a lot of meetings to explain the tactical ideas. I think that's how you create a vocabulary together that uh, helps you uh, to move forward and to develop something together, some game model. What he provides me as well is the Thai point of view uh, because, okay, of course, I've been here long enough to understand the Thai culture, but some specific things, I, I need some Thai people with me that I can rely uh, to explain me, okay, this for the Thai culture is like this, like that. It, it helps me a lot. So I think we, we form a good team, a strong team together because we, we have uh, very different personalities. But when we put it together, it creates a very strong uh, coaching staff. And I think uh, it helps uh, the team to have a, a clear role from each one. And, and I think he helps me a lot uh, with, with this team. Like we've seen you doing in the news, like you're doing analysis and scouting reports for the CNA team as well. Yeah. Is like, how involved are you, were you with in, in providing information and insight to the, to the CNA team? Yeah, for the, for the last months, for the past months, uh, the, the A team required some um, opponents analysis and some data from, from the Thai players. So we, we have a methodology department where in the, in the FA where Pau is the, the head of the department. So we work together, me and him and, and the Thai staff that we have to create a report of the Thai players with the data and the minutes that they play, the games that they play. They, they, they selected some names. So they, they sent us a, a very long list of players. So we, we filled some data for them. And for the competition, we analyzed the, the opposition and we created some opponents' analysis. So we send them uh, the information of the opponents. We were not involved in the day by day, but we send them some reports. And how, ha how has your role changed since the arrival of like Kales Roma Gosa? Has it changed? Because yeah. you said it's 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 a lot better now than now that some like there's a technical director working the yeah. longer picture. Sure, sure. Before before he arrived, I was focusing only uh, with my team, with my players, with my generation. Now I have a tram a transversal role, uh, being the head of the youth. I'm I'm the head of the youth. Apart from being the head of the under 19, I'm the head of the youth. So I'm I have to help uh, the whole system, the whole youth teams. Uh, the women's teams as well. I, I have some meetings. I assess them. I try to help them uh, with, with the things that, that they need. I want to explain how we play, to put examples of things that the processes that we do. So now, uh, since Carlos arrived, we have the methodology department uh, in the FA that is led by my, by my uh, partner, uh, Pau Garnache. And, uh, and, and me as a head of the youth development, I have more responsibilities and I have uh, more options to help uh, the Thai football since Carlos arrived, of course. 
And uh, any closing thoughts on, uh, well, the progress that's being made as a whole? What message do you have for, for Thai fans? Well, I first of all, I want to say uh, that we miss the competition so much. In, in the past year, we, we couldn't compete and, uh, with the new teams. But I think that uh, soon we'll have the option to, to be back. And I want to, to give back to the Thai people all the love and all the support that they, that they gave me in the past years. I, I've been uh, so far uh, very happy to, to work with the Thai players and, and with the Thai fans because they are very supportive. And, and I want to, to give them uh, in, the, in the near future um, good results as well because, of course, everyone wants that. But with, with the hard work that, we, that we're doing, with the process that we implemented in, in the youth teams, I'm sure that in a very near future, when we have the chance to, to go back to compete, we will we'll be back strong and we will prove that uh, this way, the way that we are implementing will give uh, to the Thai fans a lot of uh, happy times and, and a lot of uh, success. That's my, my target and, and I hope to make it happen in the, in the next years. I know we've asked you a lot, so many questions and I think your answer is, is really detailed and I think it gives us a, 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 a deeper insight and, and a wider perspective on, on, on what's been going on in terms of youth development and it sure. kind of reminds us and gives us the, the faith we needed to, to actually you know, to, to, to see football as a dream and not an, an obsession. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be, you know, talking about these comments and looking over them for quite a while. So thank you so much for the insights. Hope the viewers enjoyed it as well. That's all we have for today. Thank you once again, Salah, for joining us. For all the listeners, uh, please go and check tidycentral.com and, of course, find us on Twitter, on Facebook, and a whole bunch of other places. Thank you so much for watching and see you all next time.